you all coming out on this cold winter day. I guess winter has started. But anyway, we know it's cold. And so I just want to first of all thank Ward 1 uh, for those who voted for me and re-elected me. I just want to thank you uh, for entrusting your vote in me uh, to do the right thing to move Ward 1 and rock him out forward. So this is an informal um, event. We're just going to shake hands, fellowship, and eat and enjoy uh, the good music. And I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Nehemiah Smith, he would come and give us grace. And if you have any questions, uh, any ideas or anything for War One, just feel free to pull me to the side and just talk to me. And uh, I'll be sure to try to get back with you or hopefully implement those. I also want to uh, recognize Mr. Robin Davis and his wife. He was my campaign manager. He also is the president of the Meadowbrook uh, community. Also, who else from Neighborhood Association? Sharon is with Hillsdale. Uh, she's one of the officers of Hillsdale community. Uh, she's out tonight. Uh, thank God for my mother and my family. They're here also. Um, I also see another one of my good supporters, uh, Mr. Wiggins. Well, Miss Wiggins and her husband that was always texting me, uh, telling me what I need to do and not do. So I, I appreciate that. I appreciate everybody who uh, just encouraged me and, and just gave me uh, encouragement to, to continue to run a, a clean campaign. So I do want to thank you for that. So at this time, I'm not going to belabor the point. I'm going to ask Reverend Smith to come. The food is ready. I just say this, let's eat, drink, and be merry right here at Reverend Smith. Let us all join hands. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening, God. We thank you for these residents of Ward 1 and other, other wards in our city who have gathered here for this fellowship. God, continue to bless each and every one of them, their households, their communities, this great city, and our great councilman, Andre Knight. God, continue to guide him in the way that you would have him to go, have him not to lean to his own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge you, and we know you will direct his path. God, please bless the food that we're about to receive and the hands that have prepared it for the nourishment of our bodies for Christ's sake and forever. Amen. 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 Time to join himself again. We thank uh, Councilman Knight uh, for uh, having this for his Ward One representatives. We're going to take a couple of minutes just to talk about uh, the U.S. Census that's coming up in 2020. That's a very important. It's very important to our community, so we're going to make sure we get the word out as much as possible. Tonight we have the U.S. Census representatives for Edgecombe County, Bernadette Richards. So I'm going to allow her to come up and spend a couple of minutes and uh, share some information with you. Good evening. My name is Brenda Richards. Thank you for having me. Um, I am actually located in Wake County. I'm responsible for several counties throughout North Carolina. We're under the 
regional office in Atlanta, which is responsible for several states to include North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. The goal of the census is to come everyone once, only once, and in the right place. And when we say everyone, we mean every living, breathing human being. Okay? It is not a citizenship thing, it's just everyone. We're not partisan, we're not politically affiliated with any um, political uh, party. The census is about power and money. Power meaning that it actually determines whether a state could gain or lose a congressional seat. States, Northern states have actually been losing seats as a result of individuals from the North migrating to the South. Southern states have actually picked up seats last decennial, such as Georgia they picked up a seat, South Carolina picked up a seat, and four and um, Florida picked up two seats. North Carolina remained unchanged. However, we're targeted to pick up one, to gain one or two seats next decennial, next month in the 2020 census. That's the power. The power is also actually determines redistricting, which is a very hot topic in North Carolina. And this is the reason why we need to ensure that you actually respond to the census, which is going to be a postcard. Each household will receive a postcard in March. That postcard will have a barcode that's unique to your household. You will then use that barcode to actually call in, or you can go online and respond to the questions. It will actually, you will actually receive up to three postcards if you don't respond. However, if you fail to respond after receipt of three postcards and two notifications, we will then do it the traditional way, which is knocking on doors. So if you don't want anyone knocking on your door, and as a result of the current climate, you may want to just respond when you see the first postcard. It's basically 10 questions. It is not lengthy, and you may at times hear individuals say, well, I've already done that. No, they have not. Each year, the U.S. Census sends out what's called the American Community Survey. And in actuality, that is done every year, but that is what was the, um, in previous decennial, the long form, and that is the American Community Survey. The 2020 Census, or the decennial census, is done every 10 years. It also determines, the population count determines the number, when it comes to money, it determines grant funding. How many federal funds a state can receive? Again, and it's based on the population. $675 million per year is distributed to states and territories. North Carolina needs to be sure that we get our fair share. And in doing so, you have to respond. It determines funding for federal programs, social services programs, medical program, housing program, infrastructure program. It affects our daily lives. Businesses, they use the census, use the census data to determine whether they're going to actually leave or actually enter or get, go into a, bit, uh, to a location, such as Walmart. Walmart are located in every rural county. The size is determined based on the population. The, even the census data actually also is used to determine inventory. The demographics of a neighborhood is actually determines the inventory what a business sells. Whole food, whole food going to areas that have the money that people can actually afford to buy whole foods. Such um, Trader Joe's. What they do is they use that data to determine potential growth within a neighborhood. But I'm just here to let you know that you need to be alert, you need to be engaged, 
and encouraged, we're encouraging you to please participate in the census data, in the census process next um, March. Again, you're gonna receive that postcard, use that postcard, go online, fill it up, you're done. You have to be counted. We have what's called hard to count population. I was in conversation with Mr. Jones and he said this area has this big difficult <coughs> as a hard to count area. What are hard to count areas? Areas in which individuals, residents, or people have not been responding to the census. They're not responding. You did. Please let your neighbor, your friends, and family know that when they receive that postcard, they need to act, they need to respond. It's of utmost importance that they do so. I would like to just thank you for having me here, but in addition to that, I also need to mention that we're also recruiting for jobs, and we want to ensure that the individuals that are on the ground, the boots on the ground, that they are people that are part of that neighborhood. I have information in terms as to the, how one can apply for a job, and I'm asking you again, please encourage your neighbors to do apply for their jobs. They are temporary jobs, but they pay well. It's done based on, like, um, for, government, for the U.S. federal government, they do it based on location. But as I said before, they pay well. They're temporary, and we also have jobs in the, re in the area office that is um, connected to Edgecombe, which is in Greenville. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you for having me. Excuse me. Again, this is a meet and greet. If you have any questions concerning Ward 1 or the city of Rocky Mountain, just pull me to the side. Councilman Black will um, been here for a few minutes, so you can do the same to him. I know we got, I got uh, one question uh, from one constituent. So if you have anything that's burning on your hearts, just uh, come up to us and just let us know what's on your mind. This is not a working meeting. This is a meet and greet in 2020. That's when the rubber meets the road. Somebody wins t-shirts, afraid of the shift. The shift is on. And we are looking for great things for the entire city of Rocky Mountain, especially Ward 1. And 2, downtown. Y'all in the center of it all, downtown a redevelopment uh, with our new housing development and hopefully our new hotel project is going to be right beside us. Uh, we got some issues with, but well, we don't have no issues, so folks got some issues. But we hope that those issues will soon get over, that's right. So I'm just going to ask Ward 1 just to gear up with us uh, and come to the council meetings and and support us and commit to the whole meeting where the information um, is shared. And just one thing on transparency. I think we have always been transparent uh, in what we do because before we got on the council, uh, there was literally no transparency in our community. So again, if you have any questions, just grab us to the side and uh, we'll be glad to to, to answer those questions. All right, thank you. Just continue to eat and drink and be merry. <laughs>